Greetings, Sparky here. So today we're going to take a quick look at how to create a transport fever map. The first thing you need to do is to open your browser and go to worldpainter.net and download this tool. This tool was created for Minecraft but it works perfectly well for Transport Fever. So download your version here. You can see the different options. And then once you've installed that, start the World Painter. And here we go. The first thing we will need to do is to create a new map. This is a randomized map that's been created for Minecraft. But ours are slightly different, so we go to File, New World, and we give our map a name. My map is going to be Megatropolis, which is going to be the name of my new Let's Play Transport Fever. Now our dimensions, we need to have 3073, which is uh, the pixels of a large map in Transport Fever. Now you'll notice though that when I tab out of this field it changes it down to 3072 because the Minecraft generator will only work in those multiples of 128 as it says there. So we'll stick with 30724 now. Uh, we select flat so that it's completely flat, there's nothing there. We don't need to touch anything else here. We click create. Boom, there we go, our new world. For transport fever. So up at the top here along the menu we can zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole square. I've gone for square there are many different options and I will put those in the description so you can choose whichever one you want. Now the next thing is previous to this in PowerPoint I created a kind of mock-up of roughly what I wanted the world to look like. You can uh, do that as well. It's just a saved PNG file. So you can create that in whatever tool you like. I did it, as I say, in PowerPoint. And here we go. Open that. There we go. You'll see it's just open there. You can see, though, it's uh, not quite the right size. So we have to do a few things here. We change the scale. And that's We'll set it to be the right size. We have to move it back to the middle of the map. So we're going to go for minus 1550, which I know is the right setting. It's just a bit of trial and error. We'll give you that. Then the Y will be minus 1300. Boom. And then lastly, we're just going to make it slightly more transparent so that it doesn't get in the way of what we're doing. So the next thing. Now we have to start adding in our rivers. So we close that. So we're going to select our brush. And the next thing we need to select is our radius. Now we just use our mouse wheel for that. Here's a shot of what those radiuses look like inside Transport Fever. Transport Fever itself in the equivalent radius of this tool is around 10 to 15 radius. So I'm going to go for a 20 radius because I want nice big rivers down the middle of my map. Now, I don't know if you can see at the bottom of my screen, the radius is changing when I turn my mouse wheel. And we're going to go for 20. Boom, there we go. We're going to zoom in slightly, because uh, otherwise you can't really see the effect of what's happening. We're going up here. And I'm going to right-click. And there we go. Now it looks a bit out of scale, but that's just because that's for a guide for me. So we're going down here, and it's a river, so it can wind around a little bit. Don't worry about you can't see all the way through. And then we'll stop at the middle. And we'll just go over everything again. You can adjust the intensity on the right-hand side, as I'm sure you can see. The only problem with that is that it does move quite quickly, so I prefer to just take my time. It also adds effects as you go over it each time. It's not quite the same. You don't <clears throat> get it in the right place every time. So it does affect how the riverbanks look, which 
is quite a good thing. So here we go. Almost done. So I'm going to just finish off all the rivers in this same way and then you can watch. After I finished the rivers, I went straight in and started doing all the mountains as well. Same theory, except instead of using the right mouse button to dig down, you just use the left mouse button to dig up. This takes a lot of uh, trial and error and you have to keep at it for quite a while. You need to hold the mouse button down and it slowly will build up the mountains. And then I export the map through the rest of the process that you'll see in this video several times to see inside transport for either how the mountains look you do need to do a bit of smoothing there's tools there in the brush tools for smoothing and things like that as well so you just have to keep exporting take a look export it again take a look okay here we are a few hours later uh, I've spent some time on this map now we need to save this as a height map that we can use for transport fever. So we go to file, export, export as high resolution height map. There we go. And you can save it as whatever you like. And once that's done, we are then ready to move to the next step, which is to make it work for transport fever. So go to a browser. Here we go. And go to www.transportfevermods.com slash en if you want English and then under tools we've got map creation click on that and the next thing we have to do is load our height map the height map is just saved as a standard PNG file so it's easy to manipulate and it takes a few seconds to upload. It's quite a big file. You can see down the bottom here, we're almost there. There we go. And give it a few seconds and it should load. This tool is great. Uh, it's an alpha state tool, but uh, it seems to work great to me. There's one slight snag with it, which I'll explain a bit later as we go through. So next we have to figure out our highest point and our lowest point. Now, this is going to depend on your height map. So for me, if uh, I change this, for example, down to 17, you can see now the rivers are there in full. If I go too far, you'll see that we're now below the, the water point. So it's just a bit of a case of trial and error. You can see there 16, too much. 17 is about right. Now you could go a little bit lower, uh, or lower on the highest point there we go 18 now that think of that as the the height of your riverbanks so 17 it's going to be a little bit more flat against the banks so i think we're going to stick with 17 and if your mountains go right to the top of your map as in the height um, then you probably need this around 500 still. If you have uh, smaller, lower mountains, you'll need to lower the highest point of the map a bit. And again, it's just a case of trial and error, and you'll soon figure out what you need to do with that. Okay, at this stage, you can export your height map. And if you do it now, then Transport Fever will place all your industries and your towns uh, according to its own rules so I don't want to do that so what you can do is uh, you can use towns and industries here to create the towns and industries where exactly where you want them on the map so that's what we're going to do so we're going to create a new town and just for the sake of my game uh, we're just naming everything uh, M and then a number to start with 
you can decide the size of the town we'll see that as we go through I'm just gonna up it slightly there and then you place the crosshairs wherever you want the town so I'm gonna put it there so there we have M1 we're gonna create another new town we're gonna to call it M2 and we're gonna make it slightly bigger again and we're gonna place that one there and so on we just keep creating all these towns and we will see so normally a large map has around 12 towns on it so let's see how this pans out as i keep adding them Right, I've placed all my towns as you can see so the next step is to place all the industries so here we have a complete list of uh, the industries in the standard transport fever game we need around four of each for a map of this size you could add a couple of extra um, oil and grain for example because they're needed in the production of plastics as well as uh, bombs and the refinery work so it's your choice but I would recommend on a large map you have at least four of each so I'm gonna go ahead and place that on here now you can see you just click it and then place it so we'll do that and I'll be right back with you Right, we're almost there as you can see I have now placed all of my factories so we have four of everything and uh, for this campaign that I'm going to do there's a reason why it's uh, laid out quite like it is with nothing in the middle so the next step is to press the export button this will download a zip file and in the zip file there's two files one is the height map PNG and the second is the map.lua file. We'll take a quick look in here and you will see it as well. There we go. So now you have to copy these over to your Transport Fever games directory. So let me just pull over another window so you can see where that should go. So here we go. So we've got program files x86 now I purchased transport fever from steam so it's under my steam directory steam apps common transport fever maps and then the name of this file so in this case height maps so that's the subdirectory is height map then there's two files in there now because I've done this a few times the files already exist so I just need to copy those over and replace them yes please and that will replace those files a quick look inside the LUA file all this is is a list of the coordinates and the industries you've placed along with the highest point lowest point information as well and start year and industries exist towns exist that's all this file does it's just text so that's goes in there and then the next thing to do is to of course start transport fever okay once we've created our map we can go into free game and custom for me and just to give you a bit of background on what I'm doing here with this map we're going to have European everything except for the buildings I do like the American skyscrapers later in the game so we're going to go for that I'll talk through the mods a bit later on so we can go back there and then our map select map whatever you called the map in our case Megatropolis 
and then start and we will load the game so here's our final map let's uh, bring it so you can have a good look at it everything's where I placed it you can see got some mountains over the back here and of course the key thing with this map was the waterways and I've spent a lot of time on these waterways if we take a quick look at the navigable water you'll see that uh, it's at least two squares wide everywhere this is because uh, I intend on using a lot of uh, freight through ships in this game walkthrough so there we go there's our map we can have another quick last look around let's switch off the water one of the tricky things and what you need to keep an eye on of course is these riverbank heights we go down you can see there arguably the water could be a bit lower um, but the more I dig down uh, the more that we have to keep adjusting the water level every time so I'm okay with that one of the things that I did to decide on the riverbank height was simply to pop a road across the river and then one click should clear the way through and I tried to do that in most places it doesn't work everywhere it, but the idea is of course to avoid those horrifically high bridges that look completely awful there you go that's okay but of course the more you start going up these bridges really don't look very good so one click up for most of the map will cover the water area okay we'll leave it there so please do follow my megatropolis series coming up uh, it's a new take i think on how to approach the game and uh, i'll be talking more about that in the intro of the next one if this video was useful please do give it a like so that other people can find it as well and if you do want to see more videos like this or follow the Megatropolis series, please do subscribe. Thanks.